the Jewish channels we can review. The Netanyahu administration is tussling with Israel's high court, using comedy for a good cause, and more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello, and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. More than 1,000 African asylum seekers will be released from detention in Israel this week. Their release was ordered by Israel's High Court of Justice, which found that the detentions by the administration of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu were illegal. They had been escaping civil war, genocide, and other dangers in Eritrea and the Sudan. The Netanyahu administration has barred these asylum seekers from going to Tel Aviv and Eilat, however, where many other African refugee communities are and where many who'd been detained could find their family, friends, and jobs. The Netanyahu administration had another of its efforts shot down by the Israeli court. Netanyahu had sought to incentivize ultra-Orthodox parties to join his coalition government, in part by promising the position of Deputy Minister of Health to an ultra-Orthodox rabbi, while promising not to put an actual Minister of Health in the job to oversee him. The ultra-Orthodox party, UTJ, has never had a cabinet-level minister in a government, largely due to conflicts between the ultra-Orthodox philosophy of the party and the operation of the Jewish state. The current Deputy Minister, Rabbi Yaakov Lietzman, has a history of dealings on health matters that speaks to a fundamentalist philosophy that rejects science and also reveals examples of possible corruption. Litzman himself was involved in a kickback scheme involving the ultra-Orthodox newspaper Hamudia, according to Israel's Channel 2 News, and then later tried to block a bill to ban tobacco ads, which are a major source of income for the ultra-Orthodox newspaper. Meantime, here in the United States, the ultra-Orthodox community's health is being put at risk by leading rabbis as well. Three major ultra-Orthodox rabbis have issued a ruling that children who have not been vaccinated must be allowed to attend ultra-Orthodox schools. The three rabbis are some of the most well-known in the ultra-Orthodox world, Philadelphia's Rabbi Shmuel Kamenetsky and Lakewood's rabbis Aryeh Malkiel Cutler and Matis Yahu Solomon. The letter suggested that dangers of going unvaccinated could be outweighed by spiritual health benefits. The letter closed with a statement, May the chus or merit of conducting ourselves according to Das Torah or Torah knowledge be a true protection for our children and bring lasting health to all the members of our community, just above the signatures of Kamenetsky, Cutler, and Solomon. But a letter that none of those three rabbis signed, nor almost any leading ultra-Orthodox rabbi signed, was one endorsing the idea of contacting law enforcement regarding allegations of child abuse. The issue of contacting law enforcement is a long-running one in the ultra-Orthodox community, where many rabbis have been known to endorse the idea of speaking to a rabbi first and potentially never contacting law enforcement. This letter, notably, doesn't say to speak to law enforcement before speaking to a rabbi, only saying that, quote, any individual with first-hand knowledge or reasonable basis to suspect child abuse has a religious obligation to promptly notify the secular law enforcement of that information. Despite the lax approach to promoting speaking with law enforcement and 100 signatures from other ultra-Orthodox rabbis, the letter did not gain the signatures of any members of the leading ultra-Orthodox rabbinic bodies. Moving on, a diverse group of comedians teamed up to combat violence against women, as Rebecca Honey Friedman reports. Three Jews, a Muslim, and some Christians walk into a bar and do stand-up comedy to raise awareness about violence against women. No, it's not a joke. It's the strategy of a global human rights organization called Breakthrough. New York, three women die every day in America from men killing them. Imagine if, three, if women kill three men a day, we'd be freaking out. <laughs> There's nothing funny about violence against women, but there were plenty of laughs at the recent dudes against violence against women because, duh, comedy showcase and fundraiser for Breakthrough, which tries to change culture to combat sexual assault, harassment, domestic and all gender-based violence. Comedian and musician Rob Paravonian illustrated the message through song. Thinking like she was just 17 if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, and that's not cool. <laughs> it's not cool at all. Paravonian was one of six dudes who took the stage in support of Breakthrough's mission, explained Vice President of Communications Lynn Harris, a former comedian herself. Comedy is a really powerful tool for change, for starting conversations that usually shut people down. And violence against women is one of those conversations. In its second year, the idea for Dudes Against Violence Against Women came from comedian Dean Obedala, who was shocked when he learned how widespread the problem is. Someone said something about, you know, there's 700 phone calls a day to the NYPD from women who are victims of domestic violence. So I went home and I Googled it, and they were right. And it was really eye-opening. It made me do more research. And honestly, I was oblivious to what is truly an epidemic of violence against women in this country. 
As a Muslim of Palestinian and Italian descent, Obadala has used comedy for social change before, to dispel misconceptions about Muslims, and as co-creator of the Stand Up for Peace comedy show with Jewish comedian Scott Blakeman. I believe that comedy can be a form of activism, but it's got to be funny first. But in there, you can subtly sneak things in. So the comedy show was really, we thought, a way to get men, men on stage. There's optics. It's men standing up with women against violence. I apologize on behalf of my gender. Jewish comedian Eddie Sarfati said there was an obvious reason men should be the ones on stage for this event. Because overwhelmingly men are the ones committing the violence against women. Male comedians can also act as positive role models in a culture that often doesn't treat violence against women seriously enough. And later on I'm going to another benefit for dudes against dudes who are not against violence against women uh, where we honor Bill Cosby. Um, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, did I offend the dudes for violence against women? You have football players abuse their girlfriend or fiance and get a four game suspension, while someone smokes pot and gets a much longer suspension. I mean, those are things that tell men, hey, what's more serious and what's not. But it wasn't all dudes on stage. I know you're looking at my beer gut. You're looking right at my beer gut, right? I know. I drink a little bit. What do you want? Uh, no, I'm pregnant. I'm the token woman. Comedian Ophira Eisenberg, the show's MC and the only woman in the lineup, noted that's a position she's used to being in on comedy stages. This is the one time I would say an all-male lineup does have a specific purpose that is for women, uh, which is fantastic. And gender aside, is there something particularly Jewish about using comedy for social change? There's an otherness. Uh, which you could maybe attribute it to being Jewish within a society that gives you a perspective that is different from the mainstream and allows you to actually cultivate a, sense of, a critical uh, viewpoint, which often is best delivered to the mainstream as humor because it disarms people and hopefully makes them go, wait a second, and think a little bit. So it's effective. It's very effective. For more from Dudes Against Violence Against Women, watch the full broadcast version of the Week in Review. And to find out more about Breakthrough, visit their website at us.breakthrough.tv. Thank you, Rebecca. Up Close is on a short end of summer hiatus and will return soon. That's all for this week. From all of us here at the Jewish Channel, be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 1640, Iowa Link Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Cox Cable Channel 1, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and on Comcast on the on-demand menu on premium channels. For more information, visit tjctv.com.